Welcome to the Andrew Collette Show. I'm going to attempt a hardcore Nuzlocke using only fairy type Pokemon. The base game makes the encounters kind of tricky since almost every part of the wild area does not have fairy encounters until the weather is fog, but that's not available until Leon is defeated. Without the wild area, there are only five possible areas to get encounters, with two of them being in the second half of the game and one of the three in the first half is Spritzy, which is useless because it can't evolve without a trade. So for this playthrough, I will be allowing Dens. This is still tricky because Den encounters can be annoying to get the raid to appear and some of the fairies only appear in rare dens then you gotta hope that rare den is the fairy representative so to not waste my life I'm only going to use a few I'm going to add another rule for this run they are as listed when a Pokemon faints it's dead I can only catch the first fairy type encounter from each route or area no items in battle but held items are okay set to battle mode no leveling past the next gym leaders ace Pokemon until the start of that battle no Dynamaxing, except for when catching a Pokemon in a den. And the last rule is a secret, so stay tuned. I will also be playing with the Species Clause because I can only use one of each evolution line. I chose Sobble as the starter to give Hop a fire type so he would always have a Mon that could resist fairy attacks. Also playing the Shield version again since Alistar's Gengar is a more formidable opponent than Bay's Machamp. This also eliminates Mawile and Slurpuff as possible encounters since they are sword exclusive, making our team options even more limited. My intention was to make Ralts the real starter, but since Rolling Fields didn't have the right weather, I had to attend to time travel to a future date, and what do you know, there's a fairy there. Well, gotta stick to my rules, this is the new starter. Which don't get me wrong, I want Togepi, but I could've got it mid game and now I can't get Gardevoir until late game unless I want to go through some raid shenanigans. The name theme is Famous Fairies, so Togepi is named Dama Fortuna after the best fairy of all, the fairy godmother from Shrek 2, aka one of the best sequels of all time and if you haven't heard her rendition of holding out for a hero, it's freaking amazing. Anyways, I immediately go camping with them to increase happiness, but I gotta admit, I really don't know what I'm doing here. The feature is so confusing to me, so I'm just hoping for the best. I also don't understand the curry. The next encounter is going to be the last den encounter for a very long time, since I have to keep time traveling until Cutie Fly appears at South Lake Miloke. Our fairy godmother gets the job done and catches the frail bug, then I name it Tinkerbell. Of course, our fairies will have no problem against Team Yellow's dark types, and Togepi gets to star in our first hop battle, setting up Reflect to safely dash the Wooloo, then Ancient Power, the rest of them. I still have no idea how happy he is, so we go camping again and eat some curry. Tinkerbell is our answer for the first speed battle since he's much faster than Slow Egg Godmother. A couple calm minds to boost special attack and special defense, then Tink easily sweeps the team with bug buzzes. Eevee is then caught on Route 4 and named Tooth Fairy. Since she's not a fairy type yet, I'm not allowed to use her in any trainer battles until she's a Sylveon. I was thinking Tinkerbell was going to solo Milo since the Godmother hadn't evolved yet, but right at level 20, he evolves into Togetic. I then rush to the wild area to work the digging duo. And by the way, this guy really sucked. He supposedly has great stamina, but only dug two items on the first two attempts. I go grind some more watts, third attempt, two items again. Get some more watts, only two items dug up. More walking for watts, then he digs up five, but no shiny stone. Sixth attempt, two items again. Finally, the seventh attempt gets us the shiny stone, evolving Godmother into Togekiss. Milo now has no chance thanks to our flying type. Gossiflower's grass attacks basically do nothing while the fairy godmother thinks about his nasty plots boosting his special attack just like the movie. Air Slash one hit KOs Gossiflower, Dynamax Eldegoss is next to be executed by a single Air Slash. GG Milo. On our way to Hillbury, I find the useless Spritzy encounter on Route 5 and name him Barbie. While I plow through Hop, I realize Milo gave me the answer to defeat Nessa. TM10, Magical Leaf. Since her Dreadnought is 4 times weak to grass, I only need to nasty plot once with the Fairy Godmother. Once again, we're unstoppable with these one hit KOs. In hindsight, I'm glad I got Togepi instead of Ralts. Since the Godmother had been hogging the spotlight, I have Tinkerbell face bead so the Godmother doesn't overlevel. One Calm Mind boost should do it. <gasps> what the? Oh, what the heck? Oh no! No! Yeah, I totally forgot Solo Sis had Psy Shock, which ignored my special defense boost and hit Tink's weak defense stat. Not to mention, that gooey thing has an impressive special attack stat. You have to strike first. You don't wait for the enemy to attack. It's time to reveal my new secret rule. For this playthrough, I have to dare myself to eat a raw egg every time one of my Pokemon dies. I gotta do it.
I got it down. I made that a lot worse than it had to be. Woo! Okay, we're back in the game. We'll go back. Let's get back to the regular screen. Oh, jeez. I did not like that. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for future dares. Thankfully, we can replace our fallen comrade with Impidimp at Motostoke Outskirts. I thought Maleficent was an appropriate name for this dark fairy. And even better, it has the prankster ability. Play with the stick, Tooth Fairy. Play with the stick! Why won't you just evolve already? Finally. And as you can all guess, Marnie's dark types are a complete joke to us. Now, in order to properly be ready for Kabu, our fairy godmother needs to Eevee train his speed by hunting Rukides until he's faster than Kabu's Ninetales and Arcanine. The fairy godmother proves his speed by using Nasty Plot before Ninetales does Will-O-Wisp. One more Nasty Plot and a soak from an ember. Now it's just an ancient power sweep from here. Yup, Arcanine is outsped as well, and sent his Scorches four times weak to our rock attack. Stony Wilderness Encounter is next on my list, and I have my fingers crossed that it's a prankster Cottony. Hey, listen! I named her Navi. And Hop just checked me out. In case you were wondering, Hop is still nowhere to being a threat right now. As I Eevee train the team's special attack power for the next gym battle, Maleficent evolves into Morgrim. Now the issue with Alistar's Gengar is it's faster than my fairy godmother, and I would have to Eevee train for a long time just to outspeed it. So I decided to make Navi the star of this battle, since she is faster. It doesn't get nasty plot though, and you may be wondering why I'm using Sunny Day without fire moves. That's because growth's increase in attack and special attack doubles while the sun is out. So while your mask does its best with Hex, Navi's three growths give it full power, then Shadow Balls your mask to death. Mimikyu takes two hits just because of its disguise ability, but Cursola and Gigantamax Gengar are obliterated thanks to the earlier Eevee training. I've learned my lesson earlier from Bead, so I have the Fairy Godmother take care of this, so no one gets hurt. Just had to Nasty Plot and heal between turns with leftovers, then Shadow Ball the rest. Glimwood Tangle is a bittersweet area. This is where most of the fairies reside. However, I only get one encounter. I personally really want Ponyta. Rapidash's speed would be nice. <sighs> I guess I'll make this guy work. Or maybe not. Accidentally killed it. Opal is the next boss battle, and she has two mons, which could be scary with the first being wheezing. Luckily, Godmother just needs one psychic to KO it. Now it's a mirror match with Togekiss, and we even use the same move, Ancient Power. I protect in between turns to heal with leftovers and eventually win the duel after a few Ancient Powers to each other. Mawile is the possible second threat due to the steel typing, but one flamethrower takes it out. Gigantamax Alchemy needs to be sold out, so Godmother protects the first turn to soak the finale move, then he psychics back. Takes in another finale, then one more protect to end their Dynamax turns. Two more psychics from us defeat Opal's ace, earning us the fifth gym badge. The next top battle is one I actually need to be ready for, and that's where my new physical wall comes in at the Giant's Mirror. Coughing, which I name Izzy the Indigo Fairy. I didn't get this encounter until now because I couldn't use it until I had a high enough level cap to evolve it into Weezing, who is a fairy type as opposed to coughing. Then I go back to Route 4 to Eevee train Izzy's speed by knocking out Electrikes. A technical mistake on my end, I forgot to turn battle animations on for the hop battle, so please use your imagination. Fairy Godmother still comes in before Izzy to set up three nasty plots. Trevenant does try to interrupt with Confuse Ray, but Godmother's Lumberry removes the confusion. They Confuse Ray again, and Godmother even hits himself and gets a little scared from the Shadow Claws. Best thing happens the next turn when he Baton passes, since he also snapped out of confusion, passing along the six stage boosted special attack stats to Izzy. Izzy then proceeds to Sludge Wave first, because of our speed EV training and Choice Scarf boosting our speed by 50%. This means Cinderace is knocked out easily, Heatmore is no problem, Snorlax doesn't even know what's going on, and Bolton thought it would be faster than us. After some training, Maleficent reached his final form right before the Melanie fight. The Fairy Godmother cannot do this one on his own, so he needs a nasty plot to pass them on later. I suspected Frostmoth to use Icy Wind, lowering our speed, which I gave Godmother a White Herb, which resets lowered stats back to normal one time. Now the first three mons in this battle are on thin ice, just because Fairy Godmother's speed and flamethrowers melting each one of them with just one fire breath each. Gigantamax Lapras finally appears, so Godmother pieces out with a Baton Pass, shifting the special attack boost to the Tooth Fairy, who has much better special defense and is not weak to ice. The G-Max Resonance also puts screens up for the opponent. The Tooth Fairy protects the second Dynamax turn, hardly being harmed. Then initiates a substitute, losing 25% HP, but blocks the Max Geyser. Tooth Fairy now protects in between turns for leftover healing, then attacks with the Magical Leaf. Lapras responds with Icy Wind, lowering our speed. Lapras moves first now with Surf, and we hit back with another Magical Leaf. Tooth Fairy can die from a critical hit, so she switches out and brings in Maleficent for his first boss battle. He is hit by Ice Beam, then finishes the fight with a Fake Out. Did he even have to use Sucker Punch? This hop battle is actually easier than the last one. This double lead isn't scary and there's no Boltund. 
I set up nasty plot, they defense a useless curl, another nasty plot, then double gives a sassy useless growl, aura sphere into double, flamethrower into pinkurchin, aura sphere into snorlax, I knew I could live one pyro ball from cinderace so I smack back with aura sphere, and flamethrower into corviknight. It's okay hop, you're not the easiest. That title belongs to Marnie. Literally the only attacking move that Lipard has is Sucker Punch, which can only hit me if I am using an attacking move. So I have Navi use the Sunny Day Growth combo until she's OP. And since Navi is faster than her whole team, they all get Moonblasted back to their Team Yell gang. The easiest boss title probably goes to Piers as well. All Dark types and no Dynamax? Yes please. Scrafty can't sand attack my Flying type Godmother. So Fake Out, Brick Break, and Payback, he can use all day while I set up two nasty plots, then Dazzling Gleam is too bright for all of his dark types. I don't even know what to say for the rest of the battle. Easy peasy. Ryan, I am so happy to see you. My favorite part of the game and a decent challenge. Maleficent starts the double battle with a Reflect, which goes first thanks to the Prankster ability. Flygon swings in a Steel Wing into Maleficent, which only does half the damage thanks to Reflect. I gave Izzy wide lens to boost the Will-O-Wisp's accuracy to cut in half the damage done by Gigalith, which then sets up Stealth Rocks. Our Dark Fairy begins to Nasty Plot. Luckily, Flygon hits Izzy this time with Steel Wing, but then Izzy replies back with Will-O-Wisp, cutting in half the damage done from Flygon now. Izzy then tanks the incoming Rock Blast from Gigalith. Our Double-Headed Fairy's time is done and swaps in for Navi. The Dark Fairy uses another Nasty Plot and is hit by another Steel Wing. Maleficent then eats its Citrus Berry to heal up. Gigalith then throws some rocks at Navi. Navi then protects while Maleficent sets up one last nasty plot, but is then hit by both Flygon and Gigalith, which of course they somehow knew Navi would protect. Navi now reveals her purpose with Tailwind, doubling our speed, which allows Maleficent to attack first with Dazzling Gleam, eradicating the foe's lead Pokemon. Since he's super OP now from the nasty plots and Tailwind, Ryan's back two Pokemon don't stand a chance either. From another Dazzling Gleam, the fairies have earned all eight badges now. So at this point in the game, I do need to bend the rules a little. The level cap only goes up one, and I didn't even edge out my Pokemon for the 8th gym battle, because I knew this would be a problem. In the past Nuzlocks, I've been able to box some Pokemon, shift some teammates around, but I need all of my team to make it through Route 10 to distribute the XP out as thin as possible. So I will only do the absolutely necessary battles, then go straight to the Champions Cup. I made a bad mistake too, accidentally going into battle with this hiker, and I wasn't ready for it. Izzy was able to take care of Gigalith, but took enough damage to be threatened by Rhydon. So now I'm switching through all of my team, using Protect to have Rhydon get impaled by Hail each turn. Unfortunately, anyone who switches in now could get KO'd by Rhydon, so Barbie stays in to die so the others could live. I always meant to use her for a sacrifice, but this was not the sacrifice I had planned for her. Even worse, I forgot Godmother had Aura Sphere, which could have took out Rhydon a long time ago. I guess I deserve this raw egg. Man, that's nasty. I was able to journey the rest of the route safely and enter the Champions Cup semifinals at Winden. Marnie's final battle is looking easy, but if I get too greedy, it could be trouble. Navi brings the sun out while Lipard nasty plots. Our turn to power up with growth while Lipard pulls off another nasty plot. I need one more growth to sweep her team, then Lipard uses Snarl, lowering our special attack. I did the math here to make sure three stages of special attack was enough, and indeed it was. So the Moonblast attacks wreck all of her dark types, even Gigantamax Grimmsnarl, with just one blast. If you've watched my previous Nuzlocks, you'll know Hop's double makes setting up hard since its body slam can paralyze. Cotton Guard is pointless against us, so Izzy lands the will o -Wisp, weakening the sheep's pesky attacks. Zen Headbutt doesn't do much, then Izzy summons Misty Terrain, which means we can't be paralyzed. They keep Zen Headbutting while we start to smokescreen, as much as we can to lower their accuracy, but sometimes we fail per the flinches from the headbutts. Thankfully, the leftovers help out. With the terrain gone, I switch out Izzy in case I need her later and swap in the Tooth Fairy. Zen Headbutt misses upon switching, and unfortunately, Double paralyzes Tooth Fairy with Body Slam. It's all up to luck now. How many times will they miss thanks to Smokescreen? How many Calm Minds can we pull up while being paralyzed? One weird lucky thing was Hop used Full Restore, which for sure keeps Tooth Fairy safe that turn, and keeps Double alive, which I'd rather deal with than its other teammates. Tooth Fairy now has 6 Calm Mind boosts, but I forgot that Burn was healed, so Tooth Fairy receives a good chunk of damage to put up a Reflect while holding Light Clay to last 8 turns. I have to go for Baton Pass. It's the only way to keep the rest of the team safe. Body Slam misses. We're paralyzed! Yes, 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 that's what I'm talking about! That's what I'm talking about! Yeah, yeah! Okay, hop, prepare to meet your doom. 
I just want to thank those smoke screens from Izzy. Jeez, this was close. The Fairy Godmother lives any attack from Dynamax to Cinderace, thanks to the Reflect from the Tooth Fairy. GG Hop. I gotta cover this elevator ride up to Oleana because all of her goons have seal types, which my fairies hate. Oh, no, no. Gosh dang it! I needed Izzy for the Nessa battle. This is so bad. We made it to Oleana with everyone else, but it gets worse. I gotta eat a stupid egg. Oh, I hate that so much. And it gets even worse. I hadn't updated the team since the Hop Marnie battles, so I go back to prep. Yeah, that doesn't happen. Apparently, you can't leave this place once you're here. Crap! Tooth Fairy has no attacking moves. This literally could be the end of the run. Frostlass burns us with Will-O-Wisp. While Tooth Fairy calms her mind, they surprisingly double team, and I baton pass to the stats because I was expecting Hex. Fairy Godmother's Choice Scarf does make him fast, but locks us into Ancient Power, KOing Frostlass. Thank you for sending Salazzle. Ancient Power can one-hit KO you as well. Hmm, my Lodic? Let's swap back into the Tooth Fairy while they place the Aqua Ring. I really need Calm Minds both in-game and IRL. Then tank the Surf. They do waste a turn using Safeguard, but do pull off another Surf. Let's set up Reflect for the future foes, and then get hit by a Surf again. I baton pass the three Calm Minds due to a possible critical hit Surf KO, which Godmother soaks in just fine. Unfortunately, Ancient Power is not enough, and Milotic using Recover will stall out the Ancient Power's PP. During another Recover, Navi tags in and makes the Sunlight harsh, making the Surfs weaker as well. Navi pulls off two growths while the Reflect wears off, but the Powered Up Moonblast can two-hit KO the Milotic. Serena is next. Navi's got her taken care of, though, with a single Moonblast. Now the real trouble is here. Garbodor. Navi protects to stall the first G-Max Malador. I take a look at my Champions Cup final notes and deduce that Tooth Fairy is not needed. It pains me to say, but it's sadly true. We're still not out of the woods yet though. Maleficent is next since he can stall the last Dynamax turn with Substitute. He pulls off one last Sucker Punch and then... Miss? Oh my gosh! Yo, the freaking gunk shot miss! And the weak armor lowered its defense, meaning one more sucker punch saves the team from further disaster. Thank you, 80% accurate moves. Screw you and your dumb walk into battle mechanics, Oleana. Before the finals, I buy Navi some Carbos to make it faster than Nessa's Barrascuta. Okay, I think I got it planned out for my three Pokemon to face the finals. Beat is first with his Mawile. Easy first target with Godmother's Flamethrowers. Garvor is set up time with two nasty plots, while we can take two psychics even if they are crits thanks to Citrus Berry. Shadow Ball blows Gardevoir away thanks to Speed Eevee training throughout the game. Shadow Ball one shots Rapidash first. Hatterene is an easy target as well. Three more to go in the finals. Alright Nessa, I'm a little nervous since I wanted Weezing to Will-O-Wisp, but to reflect from Maleficent will have to do. Shucks, Swords Dance is not what I wanted to see. Godmother switches in, not harmed, too bad from the Shadow Claw. I just need one nasty plot to do this and to survive the liquidation. But Tom passed those stats to Navi while Galissapod dances again. Energy Ball is the only button I'm clicking from here, activating their emergency exit ability, bringing in Pelipper, which also summons the rain with Drizzle. One Energy Ball puffs the bird away, Seeking is next and moves first? Aw oh, shoot, I forgot about Swift Swim, which Bear Scuda has, making that speed training pointless. I'm not nervous about a one-hit KO since I have a Focus Sash. I'm nervous about a Freeze from Ice Fang, which ends up thankfully missing. Let's go! Galissopod is back with a full restore, but Navi does not care and gets the critical hit. Rain is gone, and so is Gigantamax Dreadnought. Great job, Navi. Halfway through the gauntlet, Alistar time. I think Maleficent can solo this. Begins with Nasty Plot, then Dusknoir hits with Rock Tomb, lowering our speed. One more Nasty Plot, and another annoying Rock Tomb, really making us slow. Now Dusknoir goes first with Thunder Punch, and Sweep Time begins with Dark Pulse. Get out of here. Chandelure, no problem. Sucker Punch, since they're faster, but that fails due to them Will-O-Wisping, which is a non-damaging move. Shoot, I forgot about that, and now Sucker Punch is too weak. They Mystical Fire, which damages and lowers our special attack but at least Dark Pulse is still enough for a one-shot. Poltegeist is definitely faster than us, and I don't feel comfortable switching in because Navi or Godmother needs all the HP insurance to set up if needed. So I accept Maleficent is going to die here and Sucker Punch. Let me give me a crit. Oh, did you get a crit? Let's go! Okay, freak yeah, okay. With Cursula now on the field, Godmother swaps in, taking the Hex well. 
We nasty plot, then they use ancient power. I have to hope they don't get a critical hit next turn, and I need the second nasty plot. Cursula used amnesia. I'll take it. However, it does help them survive the shadow ball while Cursula uses amnesia again. Then they use full restore, which just means I need to shadow ball two more times. We see Gigantamax Gengar for the final time, which our plus four shadow ball annihilates. That was more difficult than I expected. Weather Gym Leader Finale, Ryan. Fairy Godmother has a peculiar moveset in this battle. Since Torkoal's ability Drought summons the sun right away, I have Godmother Rain Dance to not only get rid of the sun, but weaken Torkoal's Lava Plume attacks. Now our flyer can Nasty Plot safely while Torkoal responds with Yawn making us drowsy. Second Nasty Plot boost, then Lava Plume does practically nothing to us. Godmother falls asleep, but no worries, it eats the Lumberry, waking itself up. Let's Psychic into the Torkoal to avoid another yawn. With plus 4 special attack and enough speed EVs invested, the rest of the team should be easy by attacking with Dazzling Gleam into the 4 dragons. Gudra, Turtonator, Flygon, and yes, even Gigantamax Duraludon. Our 3 fairies did such an awesome job in the finals. Now before I can get some endgame encounters, I drug up the Fairy Godmother with enough Calcium, aka Special Attack EVs, for the Chairman Rose battle. This along with Expert Belt, enables him to incinerate each of his Steel types, save one with Flamethrower, before they even have a chance to attack. Clean Clang is the only fast one, but once again I'm thankful for the speed EV training done throughout this run. Gigantamax Copperaja cannot be dealt with just one flamethrower, so Godmother uses Substitute for each Dynamax turn to stall, resulting in us only losing 75% HP rather than getting one shot by the elephant. Now that they're a regular size, flamethrower is now enough. Taking a break from the story now to get my last encounters. This one I could have got a while ago, but I never saw a use for them, and that is Hatrim from the Dusty Bowl being named Krista from Ferngoli, just because it's slow. Next is Gardevoir at the Lake of Outrage, which I name Lady of the Lake. And last but not least, I go to this certain den at Hammerlock Hills, throwing a wishing piece, no unique fairy encounter, so the time traveling begins. I saved this encounter for later because if I got a 5 star, I wanted to be prepared and not die. But I worried for nothing since it ended up being a 3 star den, and then catch Clefable, naming her Puck from a Midsummer Night's Dream. While training the new recruits, Krista evolves into Hatterene. Back to the Eternatus story. This legendary's poison typing scares me. No one on my team wants to face that. I'm planning on losing someone, but I'll do my best. My plan is ruined a little because I was hoping Eternatus would flamethrower or cross poison to activate my Navi's focus sash at 1 HP. Then Endeavor would bring them down to 1 HP. But I guess we're faster? I didn't know this thing's stats. I know its IQ is low because it attempts Dynamax Cannon twice. A dragon attack against a fairy type? That doesn't work, buddy. Navi gets to use Psychic twice, getting us into phase two of Eternatus without dying. The plan here is pretty easy. Navi uses Substitute, which weird fact, I guess the Substitute doesn't show in the Eternamax battle. Anyways, Substitute protects us from Eternatus attacks, like Max Flare, so we chillin' while Zashian and Zamazenta do all of the work and occasionally throw in a Psychic. Nice! I have a full team for the final boss. I teach everyone the right moves, give the correct items, make Gardevoir take Calcium Vitamins to boost their special attack, make Hatterene take Carbos Vitamins to increase their speed, and now we're ready for Leon. Aegislash always starts off the battle with a pointless King Shield, but after that, Lady of the Lake starts the finale for real with a Shadow Ball, taking off just over 50% of its HP. The armor responds with Flash Cannon, doing major damage. Lady gets the last laugh though, with another Shadow Ball knocking out Aegislash. I expected Lady to die here from Haxorus, but they ended up missing the Iron Tail, allowing Lady to teleport out to switch in Fairy Godmother. Now Godmother is holding Choice Scarf, to increase his speed by 50%, allowing him to attack first with Dazzling Gleam, one-shotting the Haxorus. Rhyperior is sent out next, and since I'm locked into Dazzling Gleam, it's time to see if Lady of the Lake can dodge another life-threatening attack, which it doesn't. Krista is now brought in and was speed trained just for this Rhyperior, to move first using Magical Leaf, obviously slaughtering them with a four times super effective attack. Dragapult arrives, threatening us with its ghost typing using Shadow Ball, but Krista hangs in there, and just one Dazzling Gleam is enough to knock the lights out of Dragapult. Dang, Krista's putting in work! Rillaboom is Leon's penultimate Pokemon, and I'm expecting it to die here. But like the Eternatus, this thing has low IQ and keeps using Endeavor? It never works because we always have lower HP than them. So Krista just keeps using Psychic until Rillaboom is gone. Maybe Rilla and Leon had a fight before the battle or something? Whatevs, I'll take it. Maybe Gigantamax Charizard will max guard here. Only one can dream, so Krista is finally killed, ending her rampage. Fairy Godmother is my plan to defeat Charizard being faster with Choice Scarf and using Ancient Power, which is four times super effective. 
Charizard does live a hit, but so do we from a max rockfall. One more ancient power from us will seal us the game and crown us the champion of the Galar region. Definitely a weirdly difficult at times and unique Nuzlocke I've attempted so far. And yes, for those that noticed, I didn't eat an egg earlier for Sylveon's death. Don't worry, I ate that egg along with two more for Hatterene and Gardevoir's passings as well. Thanks for watching everyone. The most liked comment will be the type I'll use for the next Nuzlocke. Subscribe for more, like the video, and if you want the live experience, be sure to follow me on Twitch. Huh? Who's at my door? It's me, Goku!